Hi, this is Dr. Dan, and I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, neurotransmitter interpretation. This is part two. Last time I explained a little bit about uh, the basics of neurotransmitters, what they are, and excitatory inhibitory, and that sort of thing. Now, this time I wanted to talk a little bit about what we see on the testing and you know, what we're looking for. And the reason I'm doing this is to give you some motivation to complete your testing. And if you're kind of on the fence, you know, should I do this, should I not do this, or if I've got this kit, you know, should it worth me uh, actually completing it and filling out the paperwork? And I'm here to tell you, yes, it is. And so here's what we're looking for. Now, the first thing we want to see is the excitatory group. And that's usually, um, you know, like epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine, maybe DOPAC, which is a... Um, breakdown product of dopamine. And the reason we look at that is we want to know, like in the car metaphor, like I introduced last time, we want to look at the engine. You know, is this engine functional? And we're going to see one of, one of these um, scenarios, either everything is normal, which we don't see very often, everything's elevated, we see that quite often, everything is depressed, we see that quite often too, or a mix of all of these. So sometimes, you know, one or two of these is elevated, a couple are maybe one's in normal range and one's depressed. So what does all that mean? Um, then later on we're going to look at the um, inhibitory neurotransmitters because those are the brakes. We want to know do you have functioning brakes? And if you don't, then you're more apt to have things like anxiety disorder, panic attacks, maybe um, insomnia, that sort of thing. Now, when we look at uh, these excitatory neurotransmitters, and we see that your engine is, is off kilter, that, tell, that gives us an idea of where, how we can help you because if you're in an excitatory state, everything is like all revved up, then obviously we need to get that calmed down. And if you're de really depleted, then of course we're going to give you something entirely different to uh, help support the, that um, excitatory uh, pathway because if you have any kind of stress at all, you're going to need to be able to respond to that. And if your uh, inhibitory neurotransmitters are depleted as well, then of course we're going to treat that completely differently than if they're all revved up too. And again, I've seen all different possibilities here. We've seen some there. Everything's revved up all the way across the board, and that's more of an acute phase. You know, things haven't started to uh, deplete yet or fatigue, and sometimes everything is completely fatigued, and those people are on the verge of uh, brain death. You know, the brain is dying. It can't produce... Uh, neuro, very much um, neurological activity anymore. And so obviously we need to get that person going. So depending on the scenario we see, we can give you different amino acids and, and herbs to, uh, to help support this. And sometimes people need to be on medication during this process and sometimes people need a little bit, um, you know, forever. Just depends on the, what we're looking at, you know, and what, we're, what we start with and your own genetic makeup. and you know, how much stress you've been under your whole life. So everybody's a little different, and that's why we tailor our treatment to each person. And of course, we're going to need some follow-up because we need to see how you actually respond to treatment. But uh, this, this stuff works. And so I want to give you just an overview, an idea of what we're looking at and why we like to see these tests and what we can do for you. So thanks a lot for listening, and hopefully that was helpful.